Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to be discussing one more thing in the mains exam series and the preparation for judiciary series that we have been covering for the past couple of weeks. So we have discussed how to read bare acts, how to memorize bare acts, how to reproduce bare acts in the mains exam. Another commonly asked question is how do we read the question in the exam so that we don't make a mistake so that we can understand the question or any tricks to it and today we are going to be sharing with you a life changing trick for reading the exam question in the mains judicial services exam and as you can see on your screen the first step is going to be read the last line first don't think too much into it we will explain it in detail very soon in the video and the second tip is going to be read the question twice so let's get into it we are going to be taking examples from past year papers to show you this tip and for those of you who already have our foundation course this might not be surprising because you already know about this if you already have the foundation course and you know this tip or the strategy then just keep listening nevertheless you might learn something new and if you don't have the foundation course and this is new for you be sure that you hear this tip or this strategy very carefully so you can utilize this as well okay so on your screen you can see a question which is from delhi judicial services 2006 criminal law paper So over here is a really long question and usually the Delhi Judicial Services questions are very long. They can run into one page or two page. They can run very long and they will get you all kinds of confused. They will give you so much unnecessary detail that by the end of the question you will get completely confused and you will not know what is it that they are asking from you. So over here we are giving a small tip that when you see a question just read the first line uh, the last line first read the last line first and we are not saying that you read this question backwards we are not saying that we are not saying that you read it backwards all we are saying is just take a quick peek a quick look at the last line first so over here the last line says analyze the factual matrix and write as to whether in the given circumstances the culpability of a should be that of murder or culpable homicide not amounting to murder so you can see that the main question over here is going to be whether it is about murder or culpable homicide not amounting to murder. Now that you have this information, now when you read the question, it will be a lot easier to understand that you will read the question from the perspective that in the end you have to decide whether it is murder or culpable homicide not amounting to murder. And in the midst of it, if they give you any sort of unnecessary detail, you will not be affected by it because they will. Let's let's just take a look at the question. So it's going to be about grudge. There is a police officer. There is business premises. He confronts. He is a chum of the police. There is a pistol. The process damages vital organs. Cross-examination. Doctor states. So it's going to be a whole event from the very beginning till the end. And otherwise you would have gotten confused is this important is this important is this important why you're going down in the question you will try and remember all these details if you start from here to here but because you have read the last line first which says that you have to basically see whether it is murder or culpable homicide not amounting to murder so now when you read the question you will read it from that perspective and once you know that it's going to be a lot easier you will not get bogged down by unnecessary detail you will read it from that perspective and it will be easier for you to understand the question. Also remember that once you've read the last line and you read the question, you understand the question, just take a look at it again, read it twice. So you don't make a mistake and you don't answer the question wrong. It's a 50 mark question or a 40 mark question and this is going to make a huge difference. So make sure that you read the question twice. Let's take a look at another example 
This is a Haryana judiciary question from 2007. Now you can see from the very first line that this has something to do with dying declaration. Before we go into the question and we read it from starting to end, we'll just take a look at the last line and see what the question basically wants us to do in the very end. It says that their counsel, however, pleaded for their acquittal on the ground that the aforesaid dying declaration was supposed to have been taken by the investigating officer when Naseem was still under general anesthesia and there was no certificate of medical fitness. So this is about dying declaration, but the main issue is going to be about how this dying declaration was taken, who took it and whether there is a certificate of medical fitness. Now, if you don't know about the law on dying declaration, we have an entire series on it in which we have discussed uh, what dying declaration is. We've discussed the section in detail. We have discussed the laws, the case laws in detail. We have discussed judgments on it. We have discussed questions. So all of that is there in our dying declaration series. We are obviously not discussing the law today. We are discussing the art of reading the question most efficiently. So from the last line, you can quickly understand that this main issue is going to somehow end up as to who took it, how they took it and whether there was a certificate of medical fitness. Now, when you read the question from starting till the end, you will read it with that perspective. You will read it keeping in mind as to in the facts when you reach to the place where someone is taking a dying declaration, you will keep it in mind that whether this person is taking it when the, uh, when the victim is under general anesthesia and whether there is a certificate of medical fitness. So you will read it knowing that what is coming in the end. You will read it knowing what it is that you have to decide on and if there is any unnecessary detail about whose friend who was or how did they meet or what were the weapons involved and how did the person die. You will not get bogged down by all this unnecessary detail. You will know what the main issue is. Let's take another example. This can also apply very similarly to any civil law question. Okay, so this is a question from Delhi Judicial Services 2006. This is about marriage laws as you can see and before we read the entire question or before you read the question in the paper just take a second and look at the last line. Can A be prosecuted for bigamy? Is his second marriage valid? Decide with reason. So now you know that the main issue in this question is going to be about bigamy and whether A can be prosecuted for it and whether his second marriage is valid. Now you read the question, you will not get bogged down by unnecessary detail as we were saying before. You will not get affected by it. You will know what the main issue is. This is about the validity of his second marriage and whether he can be prosecuted for it. So now if they tell you about local panchayat, who grants divorce, and what happened in 1995 and etc etc, you will not get confused by it. You know what the main issue is. The main issue is about whether his second marriage is valid and whether he can be prosecuted. So now you read the question and the facts won't confuse you. You will read the facts in fact knowing what you have to decide in the end and you will understand the facts much better. Again, just take a quick peek at the last line. We are not saying that you read it in backward motion. You just take a peek at the last line so you know what the main issue is sometimes the questions can be so long that by the time you reach the last line you have gotten so much unnecessary detail in your mind that you're completely confused and then you have to go back and read it again in this way you save a lot of time because that is very important in the mains judicial exam you have very limited time and everybody knows the same facts, everybody knows the same case laws, you have to somehow get an advantage. And for those of you who have the foundation course, you already know all these strategies in detail because we have a full video on it. But for those of you who don't, here's a tip from us, just take a quick peek at the last line. 
that's it and then start from the top and read the question twice this is another example this is another example here this is from delhi judicial services 2007 civil law paper over here there are two questions let's just take a look at the last line so this is a pretty long question and the last line says the last line says that in 1995 three of the defendants filed an application for setting aside the compromise decree and raised a legal objection that the decree passed on the basis of compromise affects several immovable properties it required compulsory registration under section 17 of the registration act and the decree not having been registered is void and unenforceable this is disputed by the other parties so the main dispute in this section is going to be about whether the decree was compulsorily registrable under section 17 of the registration act this entire question will come down to this whether the decree is compulsory to register under section 17 now you read the question and whether you see the ancestors or you see order 23 rule 3 uc c1 c2 c3 you will not be confused by all this detail you know that the main issue in this is going to be about whether the decree should have been registered which is very simple this was the main question but to get you confused they will give you all the cpc sections all these cpc details all these orders and section numbers and dates and by the end of it you will realize it was all about section 17 and whether the decree is compulsory compulsorily registrable do you have to register the decree in a compulsory manner is it given under section 17 is it given under law is there any case law on it but once you read the last line you know that this is the main issue and then when you read the question you will not get confused you can do this similarly for every question you can just read the last line first and just the last line and then it will be a lot easier for you to understand the question if you already have our foundation course you know about this because we have an entire video with 20 such hidden strategies which others don't know about because in a competitive exam everybody is on the same pedestal almost because there are the same case laws there are the same commentaries there are the same interpretations there are the same sections so the only way you can differentiate yourself or you can get ahead in this race is if you use these kind of hidden strategies and we have made a whole video in our foundation course on 20 strategies that no one will tell you about if you already have a foundation course you know all these hidden strategies if you don't then we hope this video helped you if you take a second to read the last line of the question and then read the question it will only take 10 or 20 seconds for you to read the last line first but you will understand the question with a lot more clarity you will not get confused by all the unnecessary information they have put in there for the sole reason to confuse you they want you to go from top to bottom get confused and then in the end go back and read again but if you take a second just to read the last line you will understand the question a lot better and once you've done that we highly recommend that you read the question again and that you're going in the right direction this will make sure that you don't make a silly mistake like you understand it wrong and then you write the wrong answer so read it twice and just take a quick peek at the last line before starting the question this will literally change your life when you're writing the mains exam and if you have any more questions about the mains exam or how to write make sure you check out our foundation course because we have a lot of videos we have videos on how to study uh, where to study from which books to study from which commentaries we have videos on answer writing formats which includes civil judgment answer writing criminal judgment answer writing charge framing order writing a whole list of these formats which are required which will make you stand out in the crowd so we have a full video on that we have 20 strategies which people don't tell you we have video on how to prepare for essays how to write for essays which essay topics are must to prepare for we have an entire video on that we have pt and interview videos of course so we have covered every question that you might have in the foundation course we hope you enjoyed this tidbit of a strategy that we shared today and if you have any more questions make sure you leave it in the comments and we will see you soon